Okay, I think uh, we should start now. Actually, uh, most of the people have joined and others will join us in between. So yeah, welcome everybody. Welcome to this demo session for the web application pen testing and web bounty hunting. So I hope uh, prior to starting this, let me uh, tell you that uh, we, I'll be taking your one hour, okay? And in this one hour demo session, I'll be showing you the course module. Then we'll be discussing about what all we will be going through, like uh, in the entire course, what we will be doing, what all we'll be going through. And after that, uh, after showing you the course module, I'll show you like uh, how I will be teaching those stuff. Okay, we'll take any one of the demo and uh, we'll go through it. And finally, after the demo, we'll be having a doubt session so that you can ask your doubts. Okay, regarding to the classes and demo and whatever it is. So yeah, that will be uh, the complete one hour. Okay, so in this complete one hour, we'll be doing all this stuff. So uh, uh, I hope all of you have gone through the course module, right? I hope all of you have gone through the course module. So that is, if, if you have gone through it, that's really great. If you haven't gone through it, then also there's no any problem because uh, that is what we are going to discuss it, right? We'll be discussing that particular thing right now, okay? Uh, okay, Sampath Kumar, Sh Shiva Nagi. Okay, you have gone through the course module. That's great. Now, let me present my screen and just let me know if you can see it. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, can you see it? Everybody? Yes, it's visible. Yes, okay. Okay, Tusha. Fine. So, let me show you the course module directly, okay? Okay, so here's, the, here's our course module. If you don't have the course module, then also there's no any problem because you can always go to our, uh, go to our website and you can download it from there as well. So, there's no any problem. Okay, if you do have it, then uh, please go through it. Okay, if you haven't go, go, gone through it earlier. So, yeah, that is the thing. So, here's our syllabus. And what we will be learning in the entire thing is uh, all these modules. Okay, all of these modules. So, as you may see, the module one, which will be our web application testing methodology is covered here. So, what actually happens is, if you can see this particular module, web app testing methodology is covered here. So, our course is designed in such a way that contains the vulnerabilities from different different sources, right? Even if you go through the bug crowds VRT, if you know about the VRT, then it's great. If you don't know about the VRT, then also there is no any problem. I'll tell you about that. So bug crowds VRT is there, okay? Common C, uh, common weakness and enumeration. That is what CWE, OWASP CWE. So that is also there. Then SANS top 25. So almost from all of these different different places, uh, the bugs are bugs and uh, different different web application related issues are already added over here in, in this particular course module right and there is a, something called common attack pattern enumeration so i'll tell you what it is so uh, what uh, is the bug crowd vrt let's have a look at this okay now we all know that bug crowd is what it is a bug bounty platform there are so many different platforms as well nowadays right so bug crowd is among one of them and Bakraud is having its own VRT, which is Vulnerability Rating Taxonomy. Now, what is this VRT? VRT is something like it is their own standard of uh, looking at the vulnerabilities. Like uh, if you go and uh, try to find out the vulnerability in any of the program, which is listed there on the Bakraud, then if you find the vulnerability and if you are going to submit the report okay, for that specific vulnerability, then you have to choose the vulnerability category from the bug crowds VRT. Okay, that is what the VRT is. If you look at the VRT, there are so many different different vulnerabilities ranging from P1 to P5. P1 is what? Priority level 1. Okay, this is a technical severity of the vulnerability. So let's suppose you have found, a RC, you have found an RCE, which is a remote code execution vulnerability in any of the web application. Okay, then if you if you go and if you want to report that vulnerability using the bug crowd platform then you have to choose the vrt category which is server side injection okay so at the time of reporting the vulnerability 
Buckcrowd has its own standard. That is what the Buckcrowd VRT, Vulnerability Rating Taxonomy. Is. They rate the different different vulnerabilities on the basis of their technical severity. As you may see, the P1, Priority Level One, okay, P1, P2, and up to P5. You will find so many different different vulnerabilities. P5 vulnerabilities are just the informational things, informational issues. Uh, P4 vulnerable, uh, P4 technical severity related vulnerabilities are related to, uh, you know, low severity issues, low severity issues. Then comes, uh, you know, moderate uh, severity issues, which is P3. Then high risk, which is P2, and uh, critical ones, which are P1. Okay. Now, this VRT does not only contain the vulnerabilities related to the web application, but it also contains the vulnerabilities related to so many different things as well, like mobile applications related vulnerabilities, API related ones, then uh, automotive security related ones, right? You know, the car hacking and all those kind of stuff. So this particular VRT contains all those vulnerabilities as well. But what we will be focusing on is the vulnerabilities related to the web application part, okay? So we don't even have to come over here again and again. All those vulnerabilities, few of the vulnerabilities from the VRT are already added there in our entire course module. We'll see that later on. Then comes the OWASP, C, OWASP CWE, okay? So OWASP is yet another standard, okay? So what happens is Buckcrowd is having its own VRT, but when it comes to different platforms, like uh, when you say the hacker one, okay? So if you want to report the vulnerability on hacker one, from the hacker one platform then you have to choose the vulnerability category from here okay you have to choose that category from the OWASP CWA okay automatically when you will be reporting through the hacker one then at the reporting portal there at the hacker one you have to choose the vulnerability category from the OWASP CWA they don't have their own standard like the Buckcrowd has okay Buckcrowd has their own VRT but in case of hacker one they rely on OWASP CWA to choose the categories from, right? That is one of the thing. So bugs are added from here as well. Okay, then comes the SANS top 25. Now what is this? SANS is basically an institution. Okay, SANS is an, uh, is an institute uh, which has given the top 25 most dangerous software errors. Now, what these software errors are? We are just not talking about the web application, but these are you know, software errors, it, it includes the errors related uh, issues, vulnerabilities and errors related to the web, web server software as well, right? So the web application related part from these are also added there in the course module. And most of the people from uh, Western countries uh, do follow the SANS top 25 and uh, people working there in uh, Gulf countries and all, they do follow the OWASP uh, CWE, right? So that is what uh, the SANS and uh, OWASP is. Then finally, there comes the CAPEC. Okay. So what actually the CAPEC is? Common attack patterns. Let's suppose you have discovered a vulnerability called process scripting or let's say SQL injection, right? So using that vulnerability, what are the different, different attack patterns that you can achieve? Okay. What are the different, different things that you can do with that with the help of that uh, vulnerability so those are called attack patterns okay so whenever we will be covering any vulnerability that is listed there in our course module we will be going through its impacts right we'll be talking about the impacts of that vulnerability like what you can do with that uh, vulnerability so that will be our module one okay now we have discussed about all these things what are these so what we will be doing in our uh, sessions on the very first day. So, listen to me carefully. On the very first day, what we will be doing is, we will be talking about the very basics of the web application testing. Like, what is the difference between web app pen testing, penetration testing, as well as the web application bug bounty hunting. Okay, as we know, both are the different things, bug bounty hunting and web app testing. Okay, so we'll discuss the difference between both of these. Also, our entire course, it's designed in such a way that covers both of the things, okay? Mostly the bug bounty hunting part and the rest of the part will be for the web application pen testing. So all the issues like from the critical ones to the informational uh, 
things okay which are commonly found there all of our, all of them are added okay because of uh, looking at both both the perspectives okay web application testing or uh, bug bounty hunting even if you are a freelancer working as a bug bounty hunter or even if you are working in any organization as a web application penetration tester right so we'll be going through both of these perspectives in the entire course okay apart from that apart from the differences in all and basic things on the very first day we will discuss about like if you want to pick up any particular bug bounty platform okay there are so many platforms bug crowd hacker one integrity and so many different platforms as well so which platform you have to choose okay after that we'll be talking about how you have to approach to a program okay what target to choose how to choose a target from these bug bounty platforms okay how you have to approach it and how we can finally start testing it so also on the very first day you have to pick up any one target from any of these bug bounty platforms that will show you okay they will be guiding you on the very first day like what are the platforms and how you have to choose the platform as well as the target and which program to choose okay once you choose once is uh, will be having the first uh, session then after that what will be uh, what uh, will be having is uh, you have to choose a program okay so that what will happen from that is through the entire course what you can do is you can try to do the live testing okay live practice on on the live targets basically so that will be very interesting part okay and that will be good for you like you will be directly practicing on the live sites on the live bug bounty uh, programs so whatever the things we will be following in the entire course you can you can replicate the same things on your uh, program whatever the program you have chosen so that will be good for your live uh, hunting practice right so you have to choose that program on the very first day so that will be the things we will be doing on the very first day right interesting then coming to the second module which is practical recognizance techniques for bug hunters so yeah what we will be doing from the second day onwards we will be starting with the recognizance session that will be our information gathering part right so we will be you know looking at the information gathering how to gather the information how to find the subdomains how to automate that uh, that process of finding the subdomains actually okay uh, and after finding the domains what we can do how to find the live targets that is also something that is very interesting and we'll be looking at that as well okay so all the recognizance related part information gathering related part will be there and there will be a little bit of bash shell scripting now if now most of the people ask me like they don't have any background uh, knowledge for the of the programming any of the programming language so uh, that is okay that is absolutely fine but later on if you will you will uh, learn any of the programming language that will be you know programming like in terms of the web application uh, server side language which could be anything like a php jsp or any any server side language if you learn then that will help you the most okay especially in in case of the web applications okay but even if you don't have any prior knowledge in the server side programming or any of the programming language then also there is no need to worry about Uh, that because it will be a you know very basics of bash shell scripting and i'll show you what actually happens there okay if you already know that then it's really great okay if you know about the programming concepts then also it's really great so there's no any okay nothing to worry about that that part so we'll be doing the recon automation using bash shell scripting little bit of bash shell scripting so yeah that is that will be the thing then uh, after the module second okay we'll be going forward to the module third where we will be looking at the content discovery part okay so what is the content discovery again so what actually happens is after finding after doing the uh, information gathering finding the subdomains and all we actually do the content discovery we, di we discover the content different different type of uh, content and when doing the content discovery we may find the sensitive things like you may have heard about the sensitive data exposure and Uh, you know sensitive things which are being leaked by the web application so all those kind of things we'll be talking about right 
so that is uh, that is something which will be going through so this part also comes under the recognizance only it's a part of the information gathering only content discovery right you can say that okay because till this particular module will be going through the application will be looking at the application will be exploring the application that that's what you can say right exploring the application okay so uh, then coming to the fourth module okay now you may see module 4 is related to the testing the security of amazon cloud services and module 5th is what security issues in github repositories we may say git repositories okay so this these two modules are what uh these two modules are you may say extra assets that we are covering in the entire course apart from the web application related things these things like aws services are nowadays mostly used by the web applications so that's what we are covering like this will be your extra part now let me show you a program on the background okay so let's suppose this one is a program okay there there on the background.com it is hosted there on the background.com if you scroll down a bit you'll find that here is what c api testing related thing they do have the api as well that we can test uh, they do have the aws related part okay that is the extra assets so all these are different different extra assets that you can try to test okay what are the assets now see their web application is there that you can test their ios application is there if you are uh, aware of how to do the ios application testing then you can go for it we do have a separate dedicated course for that as well then we do have separate dedicated course for android application pen testing as well so these are different different assets okay then api is another asset that uh, any organization may have aws uh, s3 buckets and aws infrastructure and services these are different assets and finally you may see the github related thing okay github repository which is another asset you may say so two extra assets are being covered over here as you may see so it will be really a, a very interesting part okay we will be looking at how data breaches actually happened in the past we will be looking at the case studies there are so many case studies very interesting one really like uh, you know uh, hundreds of gbs of data was leaked okay uh, just because of these small small misconfigurations that we will be talking about and people have got thousands of dollars of bounties Uh, by just finding these uh, these small uh, misconfigurations there in the aws uh, s3 buckets right now if you don't know about the aws s3 buckets then it's totally fine there's no any problem because we'll be going through that as well we'll be completely going into the details like what all these are okay what these things are and how to approach and how to try to test all these kind of things okay that will be really uh, you know interesting part and finally the security issues in git repositories that i showed you again the extra asset okay that will be covering uh, where we'll be talking about uh, sensitive data disclosures how to identify the sensitive data on any public git repositories okay even if the repository is private what we can do with it okay so we'll be going through it in the detail uh, you know part in the in, in our sessions and uh, there is something called subdomain takeover which is again really very interesting and uh, it has exploded in the wild in 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 earlier in earlier days okay recently so we'll be going through it and why we have taken this subdomain takeover in github repositories part is because we'll be pointing sorry we'll be taking over the subdomains which are pointed to the git uh, github pages and i'll show you if uh, any subdomain is pointing to any different third party service then how to take it over so we'll be discussing that part as well okay so up to here up to the module 6 uh, sorry module 5 we'll we will be completely analyzing the application exploring the different different things we'll be going to the get repositories we'll be going to the aws till now please note this thing till now we haven't started any actual testing on the web application right so this will be the this will be the information gathering and all this type of part Anyone want to say anything? Vivek Vardhan, your mic is unmute. Okay. Okay. No problem. So now uh, see, this is the module sixth. Okay, where uh, we will be learning about the verb suit. Okay, 
uh, almost all of us knows about the uh, burp suit if uh, anyone doesn't know about it then th there's no any problem it's a web application testing tool which is uh, the number one tool in the industry most of the people just use this one and then comes the other ones like open source ones like OWASP zap and all those things so in the complete module 6 we'll be we'll be looking at the burp suit how to use the burp suit entirely in uh, in doing the web application testing right so the, we'll be complete we'll be covering the complete verb suit uh, training okay so that will be good for you and if you already know it uh, know about it uh, this will be a brush up thing for you you can you can revise uh, your you know all these kind of things so that will be the uh, good thing for you now comes the actual testing see module 7 from this module 7 we'll be we'll be looking at the application we'll be testing the application directly now what we will be doing is from now onwards we will be dividing the application into several different modules okay module by module we will be doing the testing so here you may see we do have the module 7 which is broken authentication and session management so whatever the broken authentication related vulnerabilities are there will be will be going through all of these over here, here and session management related vulnerabilities so both of these modules we will be covering up over here okay broken authentication part and the session management part then comes the next module which is exploiting password recovery functionalities okay so there is there comes the password recovery functionalities almost all the modern web applications have these password recovery uh, functionalities okay and whatever the vulnerabilities are related to the password recovery functionalities we can find it over here we'll be looking at that so you might be getting now what we'll be doing is the web application consists of several different modules okay it is we are not talking about a website which could be a static one we are talking about the entire web application which will be having different different functionalities different different modules authentication functionality okay authentication module will be there session management will be there okay password recovery module will be there then comes the module 9th which is access control okay what is this now access control module which is authorization related part okay and privilege privilege escalation related part so you might have heard about the i doors okay i door vulnerabilities authorization related vulnerabilities these are really very interesting ones very tricky one and interesting ones okay and here we'll be also looking at privilege escalation uh, privilege escalation in terms of the web application okay now if you are aware of uh, CTFs, if you do play the CTFs, okay, there are so many people. So I I do hope that that uh, so many of you have gone through the CTFs. If you play that, if you go through like uh, Linux based or Windows based CTFs, there you may have uh, heard about the privilege escalation. You may have seen it, and you may have even played it. I hope so. Even if not, then there is no any problem. But what I am talking about here is that part is related to the operating system privilege escalation but here we will be talking about the privilege escalation in terms of the web applications right so we'll be talking about how many types of privilege escalations are there uh, how we will perform how to perform the privilege escalations we will be performing uh, that on the live sites okay uh, privilege escalation will be doing on the live sites okay so different types of privilege uh, horizontal privilege escalation vertical one and how to do that in the web application so we'll be doing that okay then comes different module which is related to the injection vulnerability okay so almost most of the major injection vulnerabilities that are found mostly in the web applications are added over here as you may see right and uh, that will be again an interesting part injection vulnerabilities arises whenever there is lack of sanitization in the web application lack of input validation right so we will be discussing entire thing in the uh, very greater details there in the sessions right and you'll find that part very very interesting one okay uh, then comes the arbitrary code injection vulnerabilities few of the code injection vulnerabilities again these are injection vulnerabilities but these can allow uh, these can allow an attacker to perform an rce remote code execution so that is what we'll be going through in the sessions okay code injection related things we'll be injecting most of the you know malicious code arbitrary code 
there in the applications and we'll be trying to find these we'll be going through its entire topic topics okay in the detail then uh, vulnerabilities of modern web apps these are common vulnerabilities that are mostly found found like uh, directory traversal attacks uh, lfi rfi then uh, file uploads okay with dangerous types you know then parameter pollutions okay url redirections uh, then comes again few common vulnerabilities like cors again a re really interesting one cors csrfs are really interesting ones okay where we can perform the action on behalf of someone else ssrf where we can perform the action on behalf of the vulnerable web app server okay that that is uh, again really interesting part so then comes the module 14th c here in this particular module we will not be looking at any live site the reason being that we cannot directly look at you know the live sites because of uh, you know testing the denial of service attacks and buffer overflow we cannot directly do that on the production environments that's the main reason okay on the production environment we cannot do it so what we will be doing in this entire module module 14th which is testing for denial of service attack is we will be going through the case studies okay obviously we'll be going through all these topics we'll be understanding these topics how it happens why it happens okay what happens at the server side when we try to perform these attacks we'll, we'll, we'll be going through this uh, all these things in the entire detail okay but uh, live site will not be available for these things okay so instead of that what we will be doing here is we'll be going through the case studies what actually happened before okay what has happened before earlier uh, and if if these attacks happened then how it happened okay why it happened what was happening at the server side when the attack was being performed so we will uh, discuss about all these things these are again really interesting ones okay then comes some anti automation related stuff which is rate limiting kind of thing okay uh, which is again a uh, interesting part okay on most of the web application functionalities we can try to perform the anti automation okay which is anti automation test which is the rate limiting part only okay what it is uh, why we have to test it we'll be discussing that okay in the greater detail then comes some common uh, security misconfigurations okay now there is a difference between vulnerability and a misconfiguration so we'll we'll talk about that we'll go through it in our sections like what are the differences and all uh, so few as i told you like uh, even if you are working as a web application pen tester in any organization uh, you will be given a checklist okay again according to that checklist you have to you you, you have to te test the web application actually basically so uh, these are the common things like no password policy and all these small issues also you have to test so as i already told you it's uh, it is from both the perspectives like from the bug bounty hunting perspectives there are different vulnerabilities all these and uh, from the pen testing pers perspective few of the things are also there okay so from both of the perspective we have added the bugs over here okay so that's why these small small issues are also added over there and that will be plus point for you only okay now finally the module 17th what we will be doing there in the module 17th is we'll be looking at the api endpoint security analysis so what do we what does it mean okay uh, we will be going through apis like how, what are the apis how to test the apis okay most of the modern web applications even android application iOS application most of the applications contains uh, you know works on apis so these are very important part of uh, today's application infrastructure and uh, we'll be going through this part as well now again uh, what will be this thing this will not be the entire you know uh, in the greater detail we also have a complete dedicated module for the api endpoint security okay there's complete dedicated course for that okay but this thing is again extra asset okay extra asset that is added over here apart from the aws uh, thing about apart from the github thing this api thing is also there which is which is something the extra asset that we have added here in the web application related course only that will be a plus point for you okay and uh, here 
uh, will be it, it, it will be just to get you started in the api testing as well okay so that you can uh, test the apis as well okay so the very basic or introduction of the api testing will be there we'll be looking at the tools we'll be uh, intercepting the api endpoints we'll be identifying okay we'll be talking about how the web application apis can leak the data okay all those kind of st uh, stuff so that is the entire thing okay that will be our entire module so now that i have told you what are the things that we will be following in the entire course module okay and uh, uh, now let me tell you how we will be following that how i'll be teaching that basically okay and uh, after that after uh, i'll show you how, after i'll show you a demo then we'll have a doubt session okay where you can ask the doubts related to the session then okay so yeah let's start with uh, something that i used to show in the demo which is the local file inclusion so we'll be covering this particular vulnerability as of now okay uh, so let's take this particular vulnerability and let me explain you what it is if in case if you don't know about it so no any problem okay so local file inclusion let's talk about this particular thing what it is it is a web application vulnerability obviously okay uh, what happens in the local file inclusion uh, in the very simplest uh, way if i say like what actually happens there in lfi is from the web server from the web server we try to include the file on the web page okay now what kind of file local file file which is local to that web server now that web server will be having so many different different files okay uh, so what we try to do is as an attacker we try to include the sensitive files which are present there on, uh, inside the web server on the web page itself okay and that uh, that is made possible because of one of the vulnerability okay some uh, some errors and misconfigurations are there so some loophole because of the loophole a local file inclusion we can try to do that okay now let's suppose you are having something called uh, www.xyz.com okay this is one of the web application on this web application you do have something called gallery.php right which is a gallery based application where okay gallery based application where you will be able to see the images okay and there is some parameter called image equal to right now what actually happens is if there is a parameter image equals to then this image parameter will be taking up some kind of image let's say let's call that image as 1.jpg right now let's try to talk about the web server directories okay if this particular web server is there okay then the web server actually has the root directory okay at the end uh at the outermost layer it has the you know you may say the root directory inside the root directory what directories we have we do have the etc we do have the bin we do have the tmp we do have you no know, where we do have the home directory and so on uh, okay there are so many different different directories as well now what actually happens is let's suppose there is a web server okay now where the web applications are hosted okay if you have given a linux based server we are talking about the linux based server and the lfi vulnerability found there in the web application which is hosted on the linux based server so where the web application directories are found okay web application directories are found in where and inside the where we do have another folder called www okay inside the www we do have another folder Call HTML, and inside this HTML, we do have something called uh, XYZ or any web application directory. Now, let's suppose there are multiple web applications hosted. Okay, so apart from the XYZ application, we do have let's say ABC. We do have another application. Okay, uh, anything, QWERTY, anything like that. Okay. Now, let's say in the XYZ folder. if we go if we traverse forward in the xyz xyz folder we find another different different folders 
okay we find another folders like uh, let's say one will be assets okay one will be um, scripts these are the web application directories okay then comes let's say images okay, let's let's consider that in the images only so js where we'll be having the javascript files uh, php where we'll be having the php files index.html which is the home page of the app application or it could be the index.php as well okay there could be extra supporting files um, or anything else there are there could be different different folders right now let's say in the assets folder we do have so many different different assets that could be used by the web application okay so let's say there is something called images okay inside the images folder there are different uh, images 1.jpg comma 2.jpg uh, comma 3.jpg and so on there are so many different images files as well now in the assets folder we do have one more folder let's suppose icons these icons are also used there in the web applications now i hope you might be getting this particular directory structure that's what i'm trying to show you the linux directory structure okay so in case of linux based web server the website uh, the website directories will be found there or the web directory will be found there in the var www html then comes the folder of the web application then here are different web applications as well different web app directories okay but we are talking about the xyz as of now now let's say this particular image parameter is pointing to this particular folder there in the web server okay this image parameter is pointing to a particular folder inside the web server which is images folder the image is being taken which is 1.jpg so this 1.jpg image is being taken from this images folder right then uh, there is something called 2.jpg 3.jpg and so on if you change it to 3.jpg then what will happen third image will be picked up okay third image will be picked up and will be displayed on the page which page gallery.php if you change it to 2 then 2.jpg image will be picked up by this parameter from this particular directory and it will be displayed on the web page gallery.php okay so i hope you understood the basic functionality of the web application we'll be going through the live web application but before that i would like to show you the concept behind it that's what uh, the very important part of you know understanding the web application and testing the web application so our main focus in the entire course will be uh most of the more, most of the focus we will be doing on the you know understand understanding the web application architecture how the web application actually works okay because what i believe is if you will understand how the web application works then you will be able to easily go through any of the vulnerability any of the thing that you the any anything that you can test on the website okay very easily once you understand the concepts behind it so yeah this is what uh, the directory structure is and i hope how i hope you got to know that how the things are picked up by the web application and displayed on the page so this is the functionality this is the intended functionality of the web application but because of improper input validation this is a parameter now parameter is something uh, called the insertion point for us where we can insert something okay and we can send it to the server so that server will get to know what thing has to be picked up by this parameter and what thing has to be displayed on the page on the web page that's what we are talking about right so again uh, coming back to our example uh, now what if i try to go back beyond one directory what if i want to go back in the icons folder so right now this image but image parameter is pointing to this images folder okay but i want to go inside the icons folder so how can i do that i don't actually know i don't actually know what is the directory structure there in the back end because it it will be a completely black box we will be not be you know uh, having any directory structure we, we don't uh, we don't know basically what directory how many directories are present there okay so for that also i'll tell you the trick but uh, i I'm, i'm just trying to show you the basic thing like how i can go inside the icons folder let's suppose if you have been given a terminal okay linux based terminal so in that terminal what you will be doing doing if you want to go inside any of the directory then what you do is you do the cd command you you just type the cd command 
and you try to go inside that particular thing. Let's say see the images. So by doing that, you will be going inside the folder called images. Okay. You just have to uh, type the name of that particular folder. If you do see the icons, you'll be you'll be going inside the icons. Okay. If there is an icon folder available, but sometimes you have to get the entire path. If you are uh, that depends on your present working directory. Now let's suppose our present working directory is images folder because we know that this parameter is pointing to the images folder. So let's consider this thing as an example. Okay, let's let's hope, uh, let's see, let's suppose that we are in the images folder. If I want to go beyond the images folder, then what should I do? I have to do something called cd, which is our command, okay, for changing the directory, change directory, space, dot, dot. If I do that, then this dot, dot represents the parent working directory, parent directory. So if you do cd space dot dot, we will be present, uh, we'll be going back, we'll be going beyond one folder, which is beyond the images folder, we will be going inside the assets folder. Now we are in the assets folder. And uh, now if I want to go forward in the icons folder, what, what, what should I do? Slash icons. So this, this particular command will take me from the images folder to the asset folder and from the asset folder will be moving forward in the forward direction, which is icons. Okay, if I want to go beyond the assets folder, okay, if I want to go beyond the assets folder, then, uh, then again, I'll, I'll give two more dots, okay? So, what these uh, dot dot slash represents, this dot dot slash dot dot slash, these are called something, directory, traversal, sequences, okay? These are what? Directory traversal sequences. So, you have to follow these sequences in order to go beyond uh, any folder and uh, inside any folder okay you have to traverse back and forth in the different different directories there in the web application server okay so you have to assume that you are going upwards backwards in the directories right so right now let's suppose if we are given the two dots we are beyond okay the images folder if we are given two more dots we are beyond the assets folder okay so it means right now we are in the xyz now, from the XYZ folder, if I want to go beyond, again, again, if uh, I want to go uh, beyond XYZ folder, I can give two more dot dot and slash. Now, I'm in the HTML. If I want to go beyond the HTML as well, again, I can give two more direct, uh, you know, dots and one slash, which is a directory travel sequence. Right now, I'm in the www. If I want to go beyond that, then again, one more directory travel sequence right now I'm in the where okay now I want to go beyond that as well I want to go into the root of the web server so again one more time I'll give the directory travel sequence in the terminal okay just consider just suppose that we are using a terminal and we are going backward uh, from this particular folder images folder okay so this much directory travel sequences and will be present will be going into the root so finally we are in the root now, if again, you will give dot dot slash dot dot slash, then what does it mean? Even if you are giving more and more directly travel sequences, then nothing will happen because at the end there is root. There's nothing beyond that the root. Okay. There's nothing beyond that the root directory. So what, what will happen is at the end, that doesn't matter how many directly travel sequences you are given, you are giving at the end, you will be going inside the root only. Okay, in the root folder only. Now, after you got to know that, okay, now you are in the root, so what to do? Now you have to go forward in any particular directory. You have to traverse in forward direction in any particular directory which may contain the sensitive files. Now, let's suppose uh, when we try to find these LFIs and, you know, these kind of vulnerabilities, then mostly we try to pick up some files from the ETC directory. Now, in the ETC, folder we do have so many direct uh, we do have so many sensitive files like there is something called passwd which is again uh, important and sensitive file which we actually try to look at okay and uh, apart from the pa uh, passwd there are so many files hosts okay group and so many more uh, sensitive files as well but mostly what we try to do we try to go for the etc and passwd file so in this example what if I try to give that much directory traversal sequences? Now, if I want to go uh, traverse forward, uh, traverse in the forward direction, 
I can go inside the ETC. Okay, once I'm in the ETC, what I want to do, I want to fetch the past WD file. So I'll just do something like this. I'll just give something like this. So this has became my payload now. This is what we'll be calling it as a payload. This payload we will be giving to the application. Okay, we'll be giving to the application in uh, through this particular image parameter. Now, if I give this particular thing in the image parameter, then what will happen? This image parameter will try to uh, look for this particular directory in this particular file. So, in the web application server, in the web server, in the backend, it will traverse back in. Uh, it will it will traverse back into so many directories so that it will reach to the it will reach at the end it will reach to the root finally after reaching to the root it will go further in the etc it will go further it will look for the past wd kind of file and it will finally present the contents of the past wd file on the gallery.php page so this is what actually happens in the lfi okay local file inclusion now there are there are so many more things to cover over here and it's entirely not possible in just one hour okay so in the in our sessions in the in, in our sessions well whenever we will be going through this lfi we will be looking at uh, this particular topic in the entire you know greater detail where we will be talking about the encodings and uh, if, even if this particular payload is not working if it is blocked then how to bypass that particular thing so we'll be talking about those kind of things okay inside the in our in our sessions in our actual sessions so as of now i hope you have understood the idea concept behind the uh, lfi local file inclusion actually what ha actually happens there in the local file inclusion okay so this is what the idea is this is what the concept is and this is how it actually happens now let's consider the live example live scenario so what we can do in the live scenario okay so let's see here we do have the web application okay now this web application is uh, having something called photo gallery okay the same kind of example photo gallery dot php page so this entire page is called the photo gallery page this is having some parameter which is id equals to now um, the name of the parameter could be anything okay that just depends on the developers we cannot do anything in that so now what we need to do we need to try to go beyond the directories like let's say right now id is equals to 2 so what we are being, what we are presented with, the, the last party has to. If we do something like three and hit enter, then see, when we did three, then nothing is coming over here. If we say id equals to one, then see, the last party hash one, the number one page is coming over here. Uh, if you do two, then two is also coming over there. We know that, right? The last party has to the second page the photos on the second page but if we do uh, id equal to three then what is happening we are not getting anything over here we are not getting anything on the web page itself okay so what does it mean it simply means that there is nothing called id equal there, there is no any third page over here so if there is no any third page even though the web application is is uh, showing us the page web page so what should happen there if there is no any page, you must, uh, like server must throw the 404 not found page or something like that, some kind of error, but they are not even showing any kind of error back to us, okay? So what we have to do, we got to know that, that portion where the photos were visible, that entire portion is just a portion where we'll be able to see the photos, okay? The entire web page is just a web page, okay, the, the server is sending us 200 OK as a res, uh, response code, okay, if you don't know the response code, then no, no any problem, there's no any problem, we'll, we'll go through it in, in our sessions, okay, so uh, don't need, you don't need to worry about that. So we are getting 200 OK as a response code, as I said, it's status code right now, okay, from the web server itself, so uh, but that entire portion is blank where we used to see the photos that entire portion is blank so we can say that this particular uh, id equals to uh, this id parameter is pointing to some kind of a folder there in the web, applica web application server web server okay uh, so now we have to figure out where we have to go now we don't know see this is the complete black box environment where we don't know anything about 
the directory structure of this web server of the web server where this particular site is hosted obviously we don't know about uh, you know the web directory structure where this particular site is hosted so what we'll do we'll try with we'll try uh, we'll try hit and try method okay where we will be giving so many directory traverses sequences and finally we'll be getting the results from that so let's do that let's give dot dot slash and hit enter see let's let's wait see nothing is happening okay no problem nothing is happening if we again do dot dot slash okay see what is happening we are now going two directories backward okay nothing is happening let's uh, let's try to give one one thing like etc slash pass wt so i'm directly giving etc slash pass wt so right now i'm just hoping i'm just suppose just you have to suppose that the etc pass wt is just two directories backward okay you have to suppose that etc pass wt directory is just two directories backward so by just going upwards to the two directories you will get the etc and pass wt content because we are forming the payload as of now okay we are trying hit and try method okay so if we do not do this we will not get to know that where we are traversing in the in the back end in the in the web server as uh, right now so obviously we don't know about it uh, okay so we'll try one more directory traversal sequence in and see the three directories backward then we are hoping for it is possibility but we are not getting success no problem let's do one more Let's give one more directory traversal sequence. Let's go beyond one more folder. Okay, we even don't know the names of the folders over there because of the black box environment. In the black box, we don't know anything. So our uh, how we can test it? Okay, our output will just depends on our input, whatever we are giving. So this is our input that we are giving. This is our payload. Okay, then again this. Again, we are not getting anything. No problem. then again let's try to give one more directory traversal sequence again we are not get, getting anything no any problem now it could be the case like if the web application is not accepting our payload there there might be some kind of uh, blacklist or there might be some kind of filter that is applied there so let's try to add null byte okay so as of now this null byte just try to understand that this null byte is just a bypassing method now we do have the null byte injection as well in which we'll be in, you know discussing about the null byte how it works why we have to use it where we can use it okay so as of now as for the this demo session you just uh, try to remember that this null bytes are used to bypass the filters okay we'll be going through the entire detail in our sessions so if we apply the null byte then also nothing is happening so let's try a few more directory traversal sequences until we get the result See, still we are not getting anything. No problem. Let's give few more directory traversal sequences. Okay. Okay. See what we have got. We got the entire contents of the etc pass wd file, which is present in the etc folder. Now, pass wd file is a sensitive file in the Linux environment. It contains the user-related information there. okay so we are getting the entire contents of the pass wd file and this is what uh, we actually look for when we try to find these kind of vulnerabilities okay uh, we are trying to this is a sensitive file and what we are doing we are trying to include that sensitive file on the web page itself now that sensitive file is local to the server okay hence we are calling this particular thing as local file inclusion file which is local to the web server we are including that on the web page in the very simplest way if i say okay so i hope you got to know about the entire concept of the directory structure how we traverse back and forth into the directories okay uh, what are the directory traversal sequences what are the what are, what is the payload how we have to form the payload we have formed the payload over here we have given the payload to the application we got to know about the null byte which is also used over here okay so uh, more about you know filters and blacklist and how to bypass these we'll talk about uh, these things in our sessions uh, okay so as of now this was the presentation this was a demo of this uh, lfi vulnerability now pass wd is not just a sensitive file there could be something more like host host related file is again considered to be uh, one of the sensitive file that is that is found there see what we are doing this was the gallery page okay photo gallery page but because of the lfi vulnerability we are able to include 
other files as well sensitive files as well now these files these sensitive files are local to the server okay so that's why local file inclusion we are including the files which are locally present on the web server of the vulnerable application so again this is the host configuration file then the group file is also there group uh, sorry group it's not groups okay group so group file is also that also contains the group related information then we do have something called MODD if you know about this MODD is what message of the day so system administrators Linux system administrators do what they if they want to give any message to all of the clients then client terminals then they can use this message of the day file and they can edit this so there is something added there in the MOTD, so it's not very much sensitive, but what we actually look at is the passwd, okay, and few other things related to the MySQL and all. So we'll go through that thing in the sessions, in our sessions. Okay, so I hope you got to know about what actually is happening there in the LFI, okay, what is actually happening uh, there with the LFI, what we are able to do, how we are able to do that, okay. So that is uh, the demo part as of now. Okay, so in the entire session today, in the entire demo session, what we actually did was we actually tried to look at, um, you know, we looked at the entire course module. I told you what we will be doing. And this was my way of uh, representing the things like, uh, like we did here in the LFI. So similarly, uh, other parts of the entire course module are really very really interesting and this is how we will be approaching different different things there in the course module okay this is how I'll be teaching you that stuff so that is what uh, we'll be going through and I told you how we will be going through that I will give in my way of representation demo okay so this is all about our uh, demo session as of now now uh, I'll be happy if you ask me any doubts and if you if you do have any doubts then you are surely welcome so yeah uh, hello my name is Ajay yeah hi Ajay so basically like uh, when it comes to the web penetration testing so, yeah. uh, basically what sort of the knowledge you must have basically <clears throat> I have a small knowledge on the you know, on the antivirus product from the like on the antivirus product and I'm working for a so long time uh, mm -hmm. but uh, what kind of basic expertise or maybe basic knowledge you should have when you're going to deal with the web security things uh, I would say like if you want to go for the web security then uh, you must have basic understanding of how web applications actually work okay what is the server what is the client how the request goes so that is again really very interesting thing and that is something that is prerequisite. I mean you have to understand very basics of that. If you know how the web application works, what is the client, what is what is the server, okay, how the request goes, how the response comes, then that is enough to get you started. Uh, okay, for this is for this course especially, we'll be covering everything from the very basics to the advanced. So yeah, that is the thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And even uh, okay, okay, fine. Even even I would suggest you if you can go through like the basics of uh, web architecture, uh, you can do some research about it. You can see what are the status codes and all. Even if you don't know about it, I, I can share you the resources for that. Okay. Okay, hi, hi. This is Shekha. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, okay, I have a few questions here. The first question yep. is, as per your demonstration, it is clearly defining that uh, web security, penetration testing, and bug bounty, two different courses are must, and created a one forum, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can. So it is a two forums has been created, uh, which is web security and bug bounty. Is it I'm correct? This is correct. You are correct. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, let me talk about bug bounty. I'm clearly looking for, uh, I'm not interested on the web security part. Mm -hmm. So here my intention to understand or to join this session bug bounty. I want mm -hmm. to be uh, like 
completely I want to see. As you can see, Microsoft given a bug bounty program. There, there are a different uh, programs they assign and submit. Then same way for Google, then they will award with the Google hologram and all. And uh, the same way there are multiple forums. So how? what is the ratio of bug bounty you are covering here? Mm -hmm. Are you going to cover all this bug bounty program or how this is differentiation of your uh, web security and bug bounty? What is the ratio uh, for both of them? See, uh, most of the part from this particular course will be from the uh, bug bounty hunting perspective. Okay, most of the part. Uh, as I told, in terms of ratio, how much you can ratio? In terms is... of ratio, if uh, in terms of ratio, I would say 75, 70 to 75% will be there for the uh, you know, uh, this particular part, uh, web app, sorry, bug bounty hunting part. And the rest of the part will be uh, related to like uh, pen testing part. Okay, that will be the thing. So it means, and also, but, but the yeah. agenda what you showed is module two only referring to for bug bounty. Rest all majority I can see for uh, penetration okay. testing activities. Okay, can you tell me what all these are? What are you talking about? Okay, if you can see, you have highlighted only one in, in module two. Yeah. Module two, practical recognizes techniques for bug bounty hunters. Bug okay. hunters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we yeah. have any other topics which is relevant to bug bounty? See, most of the things are there for the bug bounty hunting perspective only. As I discussed when I was talking about this entire thing, when, I was, when we were discussing about the entire course module, this is what actually I tried to say. Like most of the things, like if you know about the bugs, if you know about the vulnerabilities that most of the bug bounty hunters find, you'll find these topics, most of these topics. Okay, so that's why I'm telling you like 70 to 75 percent, almost 75 percent of the things in terms of ratio that you are trying to say. So 75 percent things we are covering from the bug bounty hunting perspective. And the rest of the things, like very few, uh, you may see uh, this one. Module 16, uh, small security misconfigurations, like no password policy. These small, small things are also there. That is related to the Pentest perspective. So, like that, uh, what actually happens is, let's suppose you are working as a web application pen tester in some company. Okay. You will be having a checklist in front of you. And that checklist will be having so many vulnerabilities. Like it will also be having CORS, CSRF, SSRF, and all these kind of things as well. Okay, so many of these things that you have to test, okay, that you have to test. But in case of bug bounty hunting, you also have to find these vulnerabilities, okay. In the, in the case of bug bounty hunting, you, you will be working as a freelancer. But you, will, you must have the understanding of these things. Like you can find the XXE if you know about most of the findings, major findings like XXE, SQL injection, CSV injection, cookie, Cross-site scripting, okay, text engineering. So many different different things are there. CSRF are found, SSRF, CORS. These are found mostly by the bug bounty and hunters. Okay, so not only the module two. Module two is just you know the information gathering part. Okay, it is just the starting. It is just the okay. information gathering part. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So just my because question. it is written Sorry bug hunters, it doesn't mean that this only topic is related to the bug bounty hunting. That's what I was trying to say. Most of the things. Okay, I hope now you have got the point. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, its okay. conclusion is here, 75% uh, is bug bounty. May I ask yeah. you about it, how you are going to give us that Microsoft uh, uh, programs, bug bounty program, and also Google, what are the platforms you are going to touch? Are you going to touch all this? Google uh, and Microsoft programs and all? Live I practicals? See. Uh, see, for the practicals, we do have random sites, okay, uh, and I, w I would say 75 to 80% of the things will be covering on live sites, okay, and uh, less of the things will be looking at uh, the online labs, something like that, okay, most of the things, so that is what uh, the ratio will be for the live sites, okay. And uh, for a few of the things like DOS attacks and as I already told you, we'll uh, not be having any live site for the DOS attack because that specific part is different part. Okay, it's not uh, legal to test uh, those related things on the production environments. 
Okay. No, I'm I'm happy with that. I understand some of the parameters, which is DOS and all is yeah. completely security reasons. I can understand. Okay. I'm just asking about: Are you going to touch the Microsoft program if you are going to pick up some live program or bug bounty, and how uh, to report it and format the same way Google? Are you going to touch especially these these uh, companies? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, no, no. We do have different programs. That's what I'm trying to say. We do have some random programs. Okay, and there we will be going uh, for the live examples and all. Okay, but but I uh, will tell you, if you want to pick up those programs, if you want to pick up those programs, then on the very first day itself that I tell, told you, like on the very first day itself, I will show you how to pick up the programs. Okay, in that we will also cover, you know, how to pick up the Google uh, related program, how to pick up the Microsoft related. Uh, programs which are uh, coming there under the you know bug bounty hunting part, bug hunting part, right? Okay, slightly. So, if you can give some conclusion here uh, about you are going to give us for an example, either myself I'm picking up Microsoft program or Google program. Yeah, yeah. Instead of uh, other programs. So, mm -hmm. uh, if if I pick up that and can I ask you, can we go with this? uh vulnerability can we how we can do and how to report it what is the kind of format what are the pre checklist can we get kind, yeah, yeah. Of, kind of it yeah that's what i told you like in the very first day only we will show you how you have to pick up the program and you also have to pick up the program on the very first day so that later okay. on whatever the things are there in the entire course module you can test all those things there in your programs whatever the program you are choosing so that that will be good for your live practice as well. Okay. Before the doubts, we are here. We are here to help. Okay. Okay. Good. You just right. clarified my questions. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Uh, Sumit Kumar, uh, we will cover CV. Yeah. We, we will be going through the CV as well. We will, we will cover the CVs. How long is the, how long is the course? What's the duration and timings? See, uh, course is uh, course duration is uh, thirty to forty five days. Okay, so that is the 30 to 45 days. That is that will be the entire uh, duration. Okay, uh, and uh, if you are interested to join it, you can uh, contact to the company number. Okay, you can contact to the management team, and they'll let you know about the timings. Okay, whenever the new batch is actually starting, and the timings related to it. So you can directly. Uh, you can directly talk to them. So just just give me a second. I'm getting a call. Okay, so any any more doubts? I'll be I'll be you know sharing the number over here in the chat. Okay. Uh, see, hi, I have a team. doubt. Yeah, please. Uh, can I ask please. the question? Uh, yeah, sure. See, as uh, someone else asked about his focus is on bounty hunting programs, right? My yeah. uh, my focus is on the uh, penetration testing. Uh, could this program act as a starting point for me, or should I focus on a different program from you guys? Uh, okay, you are just starting in this particular field. Yes, pen testing. Okay, okay, pen testing. So, uh, can can you repeat your question? What you are sorry? Uh, could could this program, this course, act as a starting point for me, or should I offer a different program? Would you be covering the basics of pen testing in this? Yeah, yeah, from the basics to the advanced. Okay, so so th that will be good for you if even if you are starting, <clears throat> even if you are starting, or even if you are at intermediate level. You'll get something new out of it, okay? Obviously, and that will be really great for you. I would okay. say. And uh, see, the comfort, comfortness with uh, carrying out the practicals. That's not. Uh, I won't have that comfortness to carry out the practicals independently. Uh, what mm -hmm. sort of help I can uh, expect from you guys in order to carry out those exp uh, experiments whenever I need help? Uh, so there's uh, there's nothing in that. Like uh, whenever you are performing the practicals, you can always reach us out. Okay, we'll be available there on the WhatsApp. So you can ask your doubts. 
we also have the groups where we can add you so that you can ask the doubts over there as well there are so many professionals as well so yeah okay and one more thing you have mentioned about broken authentication and uh, mfa as, as a part of one of your modules right mm -hmm. uh, what is the extensive coverage that you do on that part because that is going to be uh, the main aspect when i'm talking about pen testing because okay. there are certain areas that we all look for i'm i'm looking for that particular area so what is okay. the extensive uh, coverage that i can expect from you guys in, in that area would that be basic or an intermediate or an advanced so, level altogether so you are talking about just the authentication module just authentication module right yes yes so see for the authentication module we do have uh, so many things like you may if you have gone to the module then you might uh, know about see single factor authentication bypasses two factor authentication bypasses and some missing fields if you what are those then oath related stuff okay so these are few of the things that we are covering for the broken authentication part okay so uh, yeah so along with oauth would we be covering any other uh, API or uh, uh, like uh, these. Uh, okay. See, uh, if you were there when we were talking about uh, the entire course module, then yeah, yeah, I told you like at, at the last we do have a small part related to the API. Okay, so it's just to get you started in the API testing. What are what are the APIs? How to identify those? How to you know test those using different tools? Okay, so this is a part. a part you can say it's it's part of the api testing that we are covering over here as see, well see i meant web services based uh, like if we have different soap and known uh, rest based right authentication methods one is saml and others is oauth right and then mm -hmm. we have a new protocol as well which is uh, which is oauth 2.0 or something based based on the uh, deficiencies in the oauth right mm -hmm. the modern okay. authentication that we say so will that also be covered or will just be focusing on the o auth only yeah okay. will be covering you know the the latest version o 2.0 okay what the okay. o 2.0 is and we will be going through its uh, you know uh, details what is this particular thing and uh, how we can test it and this okay. is soap and rest based either of uh, you are covering o auth or you are covering saml one of them is uh, like uh, a rest based and one is soap based so would you be yeah. having the aspect of that in the authentication module like yeah see is... there are different there are different formats that could be used over there okay so we will be talking about those formats as well okay most of the apis nowadays contains the rest part okay they are rest apis nowadays okay okay so yeah sure sure so as you right. told that uh, you are just starting you are beginner in this so you don't have to worry about that like all these things what are the soap rest and all these will be covering oh and you know sure sir yeah Thank so uh, in, in this particular chat box uh, you might be getting this part, uh, this link okay you can directly whatsapp on this particular number management team and uh, they'll let you know about the timings and all okay you can even see you can even copy this from the chat box yeah anyone else Yeah, just you explain right about LF five hundred bit. Okay, there you yeah, have yeah. added the payload right, ETC pass WD. See mm -hmm. how how you can decide it. Okay, it could be possible right. The application is working on Windows application, then that the payload will not work. Mm -hmm. And at exactly. the time of doing the recon, how we can mm -hmm. identify whether the target is on Windows or Linux. Or yeah, that's what the trickiest part. Yeah, yeah, that's what the tricky part in that. So what we will be doing is uh, in the sessions when we'll be covering that. will first do the information gathering part right so when doing the information gathering recognizance only we try to find about the application okay it is not something like you you just have to pick the site and you just have to randomly start testing any one around you over there no this is not how the things work so that's what we will be learning in the very first uh, things like recognizance and information gathering part where you'll you'll completely explore the application and you'll get to know about uh, you know how the application is mapped and how it is made what frameworks what technologies it is being made so the once you get to know about that know. okay if you use the extension web plugger and all you will come to know the application okay what technology they are using but the challenge yeah. here is uh, how you will identify which os they are uh, deployed on that application 
see there are so many parts that to identify okay so see that's what i'm trying to say that is there is not just you know the vapelizer plugin or any other plugin there are so many different ways as well like uh, you know looking at the responses coming back from the server so that we'll get to know which server software is running over there whether it's apache whether it's something else okay so that's what we will be learning in the information gathering part okay that's how you'll identify whether the website is uh, you know uh, running on what uh, os whether it's a linux based or the windows based okay and then you can carry out your testing part you cannot just then directly pick up any site and you cannot just start testing for any specific vulnerability right so that's what we'll be learning in yes. your reconnaissance information gathering part okay okay yeah uh okay anyone else no one uh okay then so uh, you know, uh, sorry hello uh, i have yeah, one hi. more doubt uh hi abrikash sure. so uh, uh there is uh, i saw the module on your website is of course uh, where vulnerability assessment and pen testing so how is it different from the one which uh, you have shared or if i am looking for only web application security testing then i can go for that course or uh, or uh, the one which you show us uh, that would be beneficial to us to me see this particular course that we actually looked at okay this entire course is just related to the web applications right and uh, as for the vapt vapt part is different okay that's what you know the network side and different uh, side of the security but for just the web application pen testing okay uh, this particular course is there right okay i hope you got to know about it i hope you got yeah, it. okay okay then so yeah that is uh, that is it that is all for the today's session thank you so much guys uh, for giving me your valuable time okay uh, you may get the course module from our uh, website as well and you may even contact the management team on this particular number okay uh this particular number you can even directly whatsapp them to get to know about the timings and all so that's it from my side thank you for joining uh goodbye have a nice day bye bye thank you thanks for your time okay okay bye bye